and welcome to Human Reproduction Lesson 2. This session is on oogenesis. Uh, before you start, please do make sure that you've recapped meiosis and also completed part one of the oogenesis activity. So things that I'd like you to feel confident about by the end of today's session is that you can recall the female reproductive organs and state the locations of eugenesis, uh, understand and describe the process of eugenesis, identifying which gametes are um, haploid and diploid at, at the different stages of gametogenesis, um, and also to apply your understanding to exam questions. So interesting fact for you is that it used to be thought um, that the entire fetus was present uh, in the sperm cells and that actually the female uterus merely just grew um, the, the fetus from the sperm. As we know, that's actually very, very different um, and more resources are given to the fetus in terms of things like um, organelles like the mitochondria are given to the fetus from the maternal side. So all of your mitochondria have come from your genetic mother. So reproductive organs then. Um, so the first thing that we should notice in this diagram is that we've got the ovaries. Now this is where gametogenesis occurs. So this is where um, your secondary oocytes are produced and released during ovulation. Okay, and those secondary oocytes travel down the fallopian tubes, which are here, aka the oviduct. Um, now if there has been a recent sexual intercourse and sperm were deposited um, at the base of the cervix, then the sperm might have swum up through the uterus into the fallopian tubes towards that secondary oocyte, okay? And it's this location here where fertilization of that secondary oocyte um, would occur. And we'll come on to that actually next session. Um, if there is fertilization, then the zygote can travel down into the uterus where it will embed in this um, vascular layer uh, in the wall, in the endometrium. Um, if there is no fertilization, then the secondary oocyte will not finish meiosis and will just be released out of the body um, during the menstrual cycle, okay, or during a period. Um, okay. So oogenesis now, again, we have to link this to meiosis. It's a little bit more complicated than spermatogenesis, as you'll probably notice already, because there are certain points where the process gets paused and then restarted um, throughout a female's life, literally from um, when a female is a fetus all the way up until uh, menopause. So um, we can see here on the right, we've got uh, the process of meiosis. If you guys remember, we've got meiosis one and meiosis two. And um, so hopefully you should feel confident on that. But the key thing I wanted to do here, if you don't feel confident on that, please go back over it before you carry on this video. The key thing I wanted to do here was to illustrate how this diagram here on the right of meiosis links in with um, this diagram of oogenesis, okay? Oogenesis um, is not exactly the same as this diagram because actually we're not going to get four um, equal gametes, um, but we're going to get one larger ooted, okay? That's then going to develop potentially into an ovum uh, if you have fertilization from a sperm, okay? So let's just uh, look a little bit more at this then, okay? And Okay, so what we should hopefully see here is when we're looking at um, a female's um, ovaries, they contain lots of oogonium. Okay, and I'm going to show you a snapshot or a cross section through an ovary in a minute. So do bear in mind that we're just looking at the process first and then we'll link it to the ovaries after. So oogonium, these are diploid cells um, and these can divide um, or have divided from primordial germ cells. So we should hopefully recognize that from the previous lesson on spermatogenesis. So primordial germ cells are basically stem cells that will turn into gametes. Okay, so we'll turn into eggs in this case, or ovum in this case. So we're gonna be more specific than calling them just eggs. Um, so the oogonium, these are diploid cells. And we can see here we've got DNA replication. So that's gonna double our DNA content, which always happens before cell division. So DNA replication, we get our primary oocytes, okay? And our primary oocytes is where meiosis is going to start. And meiosis is actually um, going to start in the fetus, okay? So um, female fetuses will actually contain all of their primary oocytes before they're um, 
born and before they obviously become a, a, a baby. Um, this is paused in prophase one, so the fetus would contain all of their primary oocytes but paused in prophase one. And then when that individual reaches puberty, um, follicle stimulating hormone is going to be released and we're going to talk more about that next week but that's going to stimulate the um, the primary oocyte to continue its division to form a secondary oocyte okay um, and what we can see here is as we know in meiosis meiosis one produces haploid cells so we can see that these cells here are haploid compared to the diploid cell beforehand compared to the primary oocyte so these are our secondary oocytes down here, okay, and they're haploid. Just put a little H there for you. Now, one thing you'll also notice is that the cytoplasm wasn't evenly shared during that cell division. So here, the cytoplasm in this cell is much, much bigger than in this cell on the right, okay? And that's because um, female sexual reproduction has evolved to invest more resources, including things like cytoplasm and cell organelles, into one larger gamete, uh, compared to sperm, for example, where you still get four cells, but they're much smaller. So the, the whole purpose of having polar bodies is that you get a larger gamete um, that contains more resources. And um, that's the difference, mainly when you look actually at, at most uh, male and female um, organisms sort of on the planet is that the females will invest more and um, definitely in their gametes and, and often um, they'll invest more in the sort of raising and the upbringing of that or the resources they provide to that offspring okay um, but there's loads more that you can read up about sort of the evolution of sexual reproduction and things like that so this polar body here is going to actually disintegrate and be broken down okay um, and we're going to keep this larger one all right, and then um, every month when that individual goes through uh, the menstrual cycle, um, they're going to re um, release this secondary oocyte during ovulation. Okay, now the interesting thing here is that most of the time the secondary oocytes don't actually develop into ootids and then ovum. Okay, um, these secondary oocytes will actually be paused in metaphase and only if they are fertilized by a sperm cell will that meiosis II continue. So pretty much all of the other um, uh, secondary oocytes uh, within the female's body will just be released as a secondary oocyte during a period and will not continue its journey to finish off meiosis II. Um, only if you have fertilization, as we said, from sperm cells, then that meiosis II will finish. More on that in the next part of your activity. So let's just link that in with the diagram that we were looking at. Um, or Let's just link that back in, sorry, with the diagram of the ovaries. So we're going to zoom in here and we're going to be looking at um, a cross-section of the ovaries. And this is what it, it would kind of look like, but I want you to remember here that this is kind of... This is showing um, sort of like a time lapse of what would happen to a primary oocyte. So we've taken a, a cross cutting through. Um, and if we imagine we're going to be starting here. OK, and this is where we want to imagine we're looking at um, within a fetus, for example. This is where you will find your primary oocytes. OK, and the primary oocyte is the single cell that is uh, paused in prophase one of meiosis one. OK, and only once that individual reaches puberty um, just before ovulation, that primary oocyte will develop into a secondary oocyte. So we'll um, divide, um, but will be paused again in metaphase two. OK, so this secondary oocyte is paused here oops, during metaphase two. Um, and then at ovulation, that secondary oocyte will be released and will travel down the fallopian tubes where it could potentially meet a sperm cell. If it's fertilized, it will finish off meiosis. If not, then it will just be released as a secondary oocyte. Now, there's a few other things going on here that you guys will have noticed, and this is why it's a lot more uh, complicated to learn compared to spermatogenesis. 
So around the primary oocytes and the secondary oocytes, we also have follicles. So around the primary oocyte, we've got a primary follicle. Okay, now that's a collection of cells that basically help the primary oocyte to develop. Um, and here again, we can see around the secondary oocyte, we've got a secondary follicle. Okay, again, a, a follicle is a collection of cells that help that secondary oocyte to develop. And um, a layer of, of this follicle um, is the theca cells. Okay, now the theca cells are endocrine, which basically means hormone uh, releasing cells. So these are very important uh, during the menstrual cycle. And again, we'll come back to that more next week. But um, basically, these cells will be releasing hormones that help with the menstrual cycle. Um, so just bear in mind that that's where you'll find theca cells. And this secondary follicle might eventually or will eventually mature into a mature follicle, also called a graphion follicle. And the graphion follicle will then rupture during ovulation and will release that secondary oocyte. And that secondary oocyte, again, as we said, might move down the fallopian tubes um, and might potentially meet a sperm cell where fertilisation will happen. OK, so there's obviously a lot of information there, um, but I'd like you guys to just kind of clarify that a bit by watching a couple of videos. Do watch both of them fully all the way through because they're really, really good animations of how this process happens. So please pause, pause the video and complete part two of the eugenesis activity. OK, and moving on. So one of the questions in there was um, about female snake live, um, a female snake living in captivity. Um, giving birth without a male companion, so without sexual reproduction. So some of you might have done um, a bit of research on this and read up on that link, but this is really interesting. So this is a process called parthenogenesis, and this is basically where this individual um, did not have the opportunity to mate through sexual reproduction. So produced um, offspring using sort of a form of, of, well, using a form of asexual reproduction where the polar body that we looked at earlier, so when we were looking at this diagram here, whoops, so the polar body here, down here, and there's another one here, um, where that would basically, so this polar body, would refuse with the ooted here to produce a diploid cell. Okay, so really quite interesting, actually, because it just shows you how... Um, Organisms have such cool adaptations to allow them to, to, to live in sometimes quite difficult environments. So, for example, here, this individual wasn't able to find a mate, but still could reproduce. So a quick review quiz. Um, I'd like you just to pause the video and to try these five questions. OK, and let's take a look at the answers for those questions. So the first one is the difference between a primary follicle and a primary oocyte. So um, lots of people confuse these. Please remember that a primary oocyte is a single cell, whereas a follicle is a collection of cells that surround that primary oocyte. You'd find a secondary oocyte within a secondary follicle or a mature or graphion follicle. The stage in, the, in human females where um, the primary follicles start to mature is puberty. And during oogenesis, meiosis is paused twice. So during prophase one in the fetus, it's then picked up again at puberty, then paused at metaphase two, um, and only if you have fertilization of that secondary oocyte will that meiosis finish. Uh, the name of the structure left in the ovary after ovulation is the corpus luteum, also called the yellow body. Um, and this is really important during pregnancy um, because it's actually going to release progesterone, which will maintain the endometrium. But again, more on that next week. OK, so um, I'd like you to, to pause the video and complete parts three and four of the oogenesis activity. And finally, the learning objectives that we've covered today. So hopefully you feel confident that you can recall the female reproductive organs and state the location of eugenesis, understand and describe the process, identify the different gametes, whether they're haploid or diploid, and then apply your understanding to exam questions.